Hey, this is pretty neat. Researchers at Scripps Health have received a grant funding for the National Institute of Health to develop what is believed to be the world's first smart shoulder replacement implant. It can continuously and remotely monitor and transmit data on the inner workings of a patient's new shoulder after surgery. Joining us now, the study's co-lead investigators, Dr. DeLima and Dr. Henneke. Wow, this is fascinating stuff, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate your time. Dr. DeLima, let's tell us a little bit about this implant prototype that you're developing. How did you come up with this idea, and where are we at in the process of this? Uh, so the shoulder is much more complex than the hip or the knee, and yeah. shoulder replacements are increasing at a much faster rate than hip and knee replacements. And so what we are planning on doing is putting electronics inside a shoulder replacement implant. And these electronics can measure forces, motion, activity, and uh, can track these patients remotely. So these electronics can measure everything that you can do inside a lab. So instead of bringing patients to the lab, we are putting the lab inside the patient's shoulder wow. so we can monitor them outside. Fascinating. And how is that, uh, as the surgeon, Dr. Hedeke, how is that going to... Um, help learn how the procedures worked. Well, it's been interesting, you know, historically with shoulder replacements, patients come in because they just can't take the pain any longer. Now, yeah. one of the first questions I get is, when can I get back to sport? And right. So now I'm asking, what sport are you trying to get back to? So how do we put the implant in? How do we choose the implant in to get that? I have an 83-year-old woman ask me, she said, I want the implant with the most range of motion so I can do Back, layups they want basketball. to get back to do their exactly. thing, yeah. yeah. So, or a major league pitcher uh, who's coaching his kids comes to me and says, hey, could I throw batting practice with an artificial shoulder? And so we have to learn how to answer those questions. Uh, so you mentioned, Dr. Lima, the knee, uh, but why the shoulder? Why, why does this help people, so many people when we're looking in, at the shoulder? So the shoulder is biomechanically much more complex than the hip or the knee, and we okay. are just beginning to understand how the shoulder functions after replacing it. And so the benefits, from a scientific standpoint, the benefits are huge because we get insights into this complex biomechanics. And then the benefits to the patients would be improving surgical uh, uh, technique, yeah. improving implant design, and then advising patients to do more of the beneficial activities and less of the activities that could put the implant at risk. Dr. Hedeke, I know you deal with a lot of athletes, a lot of knee injuries and shoulder injuries. Right. Um, the shoulder injury is tough because there's a lot of you know throwing motions and everything. Um, is that one of the reasons why you're fascinated with the, with this idea? This right because we we need to be right now. We can't tell people whether they can do, for example, push-ups after or how fast they should go with their rehab sure. or whether the shoulder what's going to limit the range of motion okay. in the shoulder. So we need to know about newer designs, how to put them in, and how to tell our patients what to, how, how to rehab them. And this data will help with that, will help you chart that and help you make decisions on how quickly someone can get back to their activities? Right, we're gonna know uh, forces inside that might put extra stresses, or maybe we'll find out some of the activities we were worried about are fine to be doing, so we have to answer that. Uh, talk a little bit about the timeline here. We're still a ways out, but right. this, it's an amazing idea. But how long does it take for this to happen? When could we maybe see this in a patient? So for two years, we've got funding for two years now to test it in the lab and show that it works in a okay. cadaver in the lab and is safe to put inside patients. Then we'll probably do some intraoperative tests to make sure that it can be implanted safely. And then it takes about two to five years to get FDA approval okay. for a research study. We don't know if this could be a commercial, if it has commercial yeah. value, but you know, our interest right now is scientific. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, guys, is there a website where people can learn more information on this uh, groundbreaking research? Uh, yes, it's uh, scripts.org uh, slash ortho. Awesome. And Dr. Hedeke, you got to invite me back when this patient, <laughs> the very first patient, gets this data in their shoulder. We'd love to sit and chat with them. As love to do it. We've done previous stories on the the ankle to shoulder and, and the other fascinating things you're doing there at Scripps. Thank you. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, yeah. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks. Stay with us, everyone. Take it a quick break. Keep it right here.